Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and we have something insanely, insanely cool to take a look at today, because not long ago, actually a little while ago, I had placed an order with Edel Collectibles for some of their models, and luckily for me, the models are now finished, and I get the pleasure of adding them to my collection, however, when the models were about to be shipped to me, Edel had asked me if I would be interested in taking a look at some of their incredible pocket sores. So basically they loaned me some prototypes of the pocket sores and then I'm going to take a look at them here, review them for you guys and then we'll send them back to them. If the Kickstarter succeeds, which I really hope it does, then we will get these figures actually mass produced and released. So kind of giving us a sneak peek of what could be with the Edel Collectibles pocket sores. And again, here at first glance, they are amazing. I really haven't done much of anything with them. Like I had just opened the box because I just got off work. I opened the box and I am throwing them right up here on the review station to take a look at with you guys. So I only have like maybe a matter of a few minutes prior to this of seeing them. So you're still kind of getting my first impressions of them. And sculpt wise, they are incredible, like super highly detailed, just as beautiful as their larger models, which is extremely impressive considering how small they are. And the uh, entire figure on top of having incredible, really vibrant detail, seems to operate just as beautifully and smoothly as the larger models do. So I am, again, immediately just blown away by how beautiful both of these are. And as you can see, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion-style Giganotosaurus, and then we also have what they call the hybrid, which is obviously the Indominus Rex. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at both of these right now. And also I want you guys to stick around to the end of the video entirely so you can hear something that is really cool and you may have an opportunity to potentially own an Edel Collectibles figure, not one of these pocket sores but a 120th scale Indominus Rex like you see here, but obviously at a much larger size. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out, you know, if you're eligible for that. But again, as far as the figures go, they are phenomenal as far as the sculpt and paint for something so small. So straight away, you can see the head sculpt of the Indominus is about as screen accurate and gorgeous as I've ever seen. Like it looks legitimately exactly like the Indominus Rex. And you can see here also that the skin texture and scale detail throughout is incredible for the smaller size. You can see the nostrils as I turn the head there. The nostrils are sculpted out really nicely. You've got a beautifully painted eye with kind of like a red-orange type color and a black pupil. Very small eye and it has some really nice paintwork. And they've also given us some really nice tones of color, some beautiful dry brushing over the majority of the figure to really highlight the coloration. And of course, you have an articulated jaw, and both the upper and lower jaw articulate together. You can see we've got a really nice tongue sculpt here on the inside of the mouth. The detailing looks great everywhere. If my camera would stay focused on it, there we go. We can see how nice the detailing looks. We have a nice pinkish tone with kind of like a reddish wash included in there. And then, of course, we have those really nice interlocking teeth like you see on the Indominus Rex. And then you can see both the upper and lower jaw moving. And you can see how smooth it shuts. It shuts perfectly. As you start to move back here into the neck of our Indominus, you can see the ridges and everything running down. You can also see the quills that are, I would say, one of the Indominus Rex's trademarks. So they look really cool as you move down the course of the neck. You've got quite a few areas of articulation as you move down the neck as you've got a spot right here. You also have a spot here and then right here at the base of the neck. So that allows you to have some really nice, really smooth neck articulation that as well works perfectly. As you move down here into the body, again, look at how incredibly nice the skin texture and scale detail and everything is for a figure this small. You've got lots of rows of those kind of ridges, those osteoderms moving back here along the back of our Indominus. We have some nice muscle definition, more quills leading off of the back of the arm, and then you of course have articulation in the shoulder as well as articulation in the elbow and the wrist. The articulation works really nicely. You've got some beautifully sculpted fingers, nice scoots down the fingers as well as some really nicely painted nails 
with a black, same coloration we have there for the quills. And then as you move back here to the midsection, you can see another area of articulation for our indominus in the stomach region. You can kind of make out the hip bone a little bit, sort of right up here. You can see more of those ridges, again, running along the back. Nice muscle definition moving down the thigh. The kneecap is present right there, and you can also see some nice calf muscle. Really nice, very smooth transition to the lighter tone there for the underside. And what I really like about this is even though the majority of the figure is grayish, of course, and, uh, well, actually grayish and white, you can see kind of like a greenish tint to it almost. And that almost kind of gives me the feeling of the Indominus Rex when it is camouflaging, which I really, really like. But as you move down again into the foot sculpt, the foot sculpt looks beautiful. Really nice scoots down the front of the foot down into the toes. Again, nicely painted nails. You've got dew claws present and everything. And then as we lead back up, actually also there is articulation in the hip. You can see forward and back. We also have articulation in the knee, which didn't really cooperate with me. There we go. We can see the knee articulation as well as ankle articulation go up and down. And uh, yeah, it definitely seems like it could move a little bit left and right as well. And then as we lead out the length of the tail, you could see some more incredible skin texture, more beautiful scale detail. And as you lead out the length, you can see that we've got two areas of articulation out here on the tail as well, which can go up, down, left, right, all over the place. And you can again see how beautiful it looks from up above with the really nice, again, rows of ridges running down the back. The opposing side, of course, is going to be pretty much the exact same thing. You're not really going to see too much difference on an articulated figure like this because it's, of course, up to you to pose it and display it how you would like. But we also have the Giganotosaurus to take a look at. Now, again, as far as the Giganotosaurus goes from Jurassic World Dominion, I would say that head sculpt looks pretty darn spot on if you ask me. And you can see that as far as the coloration goes, we have some nice greens. We've got some darker greens that kind of border around the eye and stripe down in through the face. You can also see some variations of yellows, even more yellows running along the jawline. Very impressive paintwork for something so small. You've got a really nicely painted eye with a green and a black pupil. And we have the exact same type of articulation for this one as we did with the Indominus. Again, we've got the jaw articulation and both the upper and lower jaw move. You can see the inside of the mouth sports a really, really nice looking tongue sculpt. Again, that nice reddish wash included in there. Beautiful detailing there on the inside of the mouth. On the upper side, really nicely sculpted out and painted teeth as well. It looks fantastic all around as far as that goes. You have some more really nice sculpting detail up here on the top of the head. You start to see some of those ridges picking up that run down the course of the back of our Giga. As you move back here into the neck, you can again see all sorts of really nice detailing, nice kind of creasing and everything in the neck region. Nice ridges again running along the back. You can see those larger ridges picking up, then they decrease in size, and then they pick back up again in the mid-back area, then they decrease in size as you run out the length of the tail. And then you again have the same articulation that you saw for the Giganotosaurus, uh, the same that you had for the Indominus. You can see we can move all over the place. All sorts of really nice poses and positioning possible for your Giganotosaurus. And then as you move down here into the body, you see more really nice scale detail. You've got some nice kind of osteoderms and stuff picking up here and there. Really nice armored appearance to the back again of the Giga. You've got a really nice arm sculpt as well. As you move down, you can see some muscle definition and just generally some gorgeous looking sculpt and detail throughout. You again have articulation here in the shoulder as well as the elbow right there for the Giga. The Indominus did have wrist articulation, but that's because because the Indominus uh, has much longer arms than our Giganotosaurus does. So I don't think that wrist articulation would have really been possible on this one. But as you move back a little further, you again have the midsection articulation, just like we saw on the Indominus Rex. We continue to have that nice striping effect running down the back of the Giga. Again, the ridges look really good here running along the back. You again have more muscle definition in the thigh. You can see that there's like a nice armored scoot-like appearance running down the front of the thigh. Really, really nice looking paintwork again as we continue to have that darker green stripe down in design. You've got the articulation in the hip again, as well as the knee, and then the ankle, just like we saw again on the Indominus Rex. Really beautiful foot sculpt on this one as well. Look at those nice toes sculpted down there. Nicely sculpted nails, nicely painted nails and everything. 
really, really beautiful, very vibrant detail on these. Like, I'm very impressed with how good the detail pops on something that is this small. And as you move out, you can again see that we have that really nice long tail sculpt. I love how it gets very crocodilian out here at the tip of the tail. And you again have some more really nice, really vibrant detailing, especially up here in that armored area. Super smooth paint application as well as we move down here to that nice lighter yellowish tone for the underside of our Giganotosaurus. And again, you can see the same thing for the opposing side. No real difference as far as the sculpt goes because it's a totally articulated figure. It's up to you to pose it and display it how you would like. And you can even get like a head tilt going on for it. So super impressive uh, sculpting and detailing, super impressive paintwork and extremely impressive articulation on something this beautiful yet so small and another thing that's really good about these figures is the fact that they both stand beautifully and uh, that of course has a lot to do with the fact that we have ankle articulation so you can kind of position the ankles however you would need them to be positioned for them to stand and they stand beautifully but as far as a size goes i don't know how much of a difference in size there is honestly i think the indominus might be a little bit bigger so if we actually take the camera and go up above you can definitely see that the indominus is a little bit longer than our giganotosaurus just in general i think a little bit bigger so we will measure each one rather than just one like we would at times do so for a length on the indominus you were looking at a little over eight inches maybe closing in on about eight and a quarter or around 20 and a half almost 21 centimeters and then for a height the height is actually uh it's really up to you because you have them positioned currently, or at least I do have them positioned currently in a pretty nice natural position. You're looking at about three inches or seven and a half centimeters, but of course you could have them standing up taller if you would like. And then for the Giganotosaurus, get the head straight there on the Giga. You can see for a length about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And then for a height in the position that it's in as I smack the camera, you're looking at just shy of about three and a quarter inches or eight centimeters, but the Giganotosaurus is currently positioned up a little taller than our Indominus was. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Giganotosaurus and Indominus Rex Pocket Saurus figures. And you can definitely see that they are quite small. They are by no means large figures, so the name Pocket Saurus makes complete sense, I think, at this point with this comparison but for another comparison there is the takara tomi giganotosaurus next to our edel collectibles version and you can definitely see that even though the edel version isn't a whole lot bigger you can see it is a little bit bigger and definitely a lot nicer when it comes to the sculpt as well as the paint compared to the takara tomi version but basically what i wanted to show you guys was that these figures are a little bit larger than you would see for you know, a similar size range to the Takara Tomy line, but a little bit bigger, I would say, than Takara Tomy. And then for another comparison, here is one of the 5-inch basic Mattel Jurassic World Dominion figures next to our Edel version of the Giganotosaurus and Indominus. So yet again, you can see that they are really quite small. But for a final comparison, here are two figures that most Jurassic collectors would be familiar with as we have a Mattel Velociraptor and a Mattel Dilophosaurus next to our Edel collectibles pocket sores so you can see like i said they are on the smaller side but man are they incredible when it comes to the sculpt as well as their paint and articulation so these brand new pocket sores from edel collectibles are really cool and i love the fact that edel is trying something a little bit different kind of uh steering away from the extremely large 120th scale figures they've been releasing as well as the 135th scale line that they also were dabbling in and now going for something entirely different much smaller again with the pocket sore line and I know they have a lot of plans for this like they've told me in the past that they have ideas of potentially creating like play sets and everything potentially in the future but this is all of course stuff that would be far down the line what we need to worry about right now would be the first wave of pocket sores which as you can see here, feature the Indominus Rex as well as the Giganotosaurus, but there are also uh, a Tyrannosaurus Rex and Spinosaurus, and they actually have both the male and female variants of the T-Rex, and I think you might also be able to buy these unpainted on the Kickstarter as well, so you always have that option, but these figures are actually pretty cheap on there. They're around $30, I would say, which some might look at them at the size and stuff and think, well, that's not that cheap, but considering the price of an average Edel Collectibles model and also considering how 
how incredible the detailing is and incredible the paintwork is and incredible the articulation is, I would say that that is a pretty good price for something like this. And if the Kickstarter does actually get fully funded, then we will have the pleasure of having more pocket sores in the future. As I had said in my news video yesterday, actually, they are hoping to introduce the Carnotaurus, the Indoraptor, the Therizinosaurus, and the Baryonyx, I believe, would be the next round to come after this wave of pocket sores. But again, that's only if we get the funding and then they would focus on getting these figures created of course and then shipped out to everybody and then they would begin maybe another kickstarter for the next round and again i really am blown away by how beautiful these figures are the sculpting is honestly spot on to what you see in the films for both the giga and the indominus like they look great as far as the actual fine detail as well as the overall general appearance and the detailing is super vibrant on these versions now again these are prototypes but i'm sure edel is going to be overlooking the entire process of the creation of these figures so making sure that they actually live up to the standards of what edel would like to see and i know that they are specifically going to focus on the design part of their figures which is exactly what they did here but the production would be of course up to the factory they have looked into a few different factories i know this from the previous kickstarter when they tried to get a uh, previous kickstarter going they were looking into a few different factories i know they did find one that they were happy with and this factory actually has worked with quite a few different companies that we all know like mattel NECA, and hot toys among others and edel is hoping to actually have these figures available on stores like amazon of course ebay and as well as different dinosaurs stores that we all know and love at least that's their plan at this point and if the campaign succeeds they are hoping to make at least 1,000 units for the first go around they have intentions of potentially doing some uh, 135th and 120th scale figures in the future of the same style of production potentially with another Kickstarter but they're hoping to have the prices a lot more affordable for the 135th and 120th as the 135th I'm thinking they're hoping to be around 50 to 60 US dollars and the 120th would be around 250 to 350 US dollars which is a pretty massive difference uh, compared to the prices that they currently are with Edel themselves you know creating everything painting everything themselves it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper to have a factory do it for you as long as you have the funding but as of right now now they are hoping to have at least 20 different species in the pocket source line and now something that you might be interested in knowing that i had mentioned earlier in the review is that you may be able to get yourself a 120th scale hybrid so when i had ordered my edel collectibles figures and they had told me just the other day that they were ready to ship and that they were going to get my indominus rex which is one of the figures that i had ordered and uh they were shipping that one to me. They also had asked me if I would be interested in doing a giveaway as a thank you to anyone that had actually backed the Kickstarter. So if you are one of those people or if you are planning to back the Kickstarter, you would automatically be entered to potentially win a 120th scale super articulated Indominus Rex, which I will actually show off in my next review. I will have a review of the 120th indominus rex and then of course i have another one sitting here that is going to be going to whoever wins but they have told me that actually if the kickstarter does succeed as well just again as a thank you they might send a few more figures as well as a bunch of pocket sores over to give away so i may have a lot of giveaways in the future but they have a few rules for the giveaway and the first one is make sure you are subscribed to andy's dinosaur reviews the second would be to follow edel collectibles on instagram the next one is exactly as I said, you would have to support the Edel Pocket Sores on Kickstarter because it's a thank you to the people that support the Kickstarter. So as long as you've done that, then you're almost there. And the final thing would just be to share the Pocket Sores Kickstarter campaign somewhere. So all I would do is wait until the Kickstarter is over. And then as long as you show me that you did those things, you know, you give me a screenshot or something of those things. If you're the one that I pick for the winner, then the Indominus Rex would be shipped and on its way to you. So down in the comments section, let me know what you guys think of these figures and also let me know if you did in fact follow the rules and do all of those things that I just mentioned and then I can add your name to the list of people that are included in this giveaway so thank you so much to Edel Collectibles for being super cool sending these over just so I can get a quick look at them with you guys ahead of time and give their Kickstarter a little promotion now unfortunately I have the sad task of sending them back 
But uh, hopefully the Kickstarter will succeed and then I'll have a chance to actually have these in my collection at some point very soon. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.